In the last two centuries before our era, the power of Rome expanded to east and west. By the time of the first emperor Augustus, the whole Iberian Peninsula was also fully incorporated in this vast empire. In the most western province of Lusitania, where many new towns were built, Augustus founded Amaya. This now vanquished town, located today in the mountainous border area of Portugal and Spain, flourished during at least four centuries, and then gradually disappeared from the landscape in medieval times. Since 2008, intensive archaeological investigations, based mostly on non-invasive field techniques, were able to do detailed radiography of the buried architectural remains. This allowed to reconstruct the urban map of walls, streets and houses, and to visualize how this Roman town must have looked during its heyday. In the hills west of the town site, there is an abundance of water springs. This allowed the Roman engineers to build an aqueduct, bringing water downslope to the heart of the city. Field surveys by a team of geographers and archaeologists discovered here different structures of a dam and an impressive canalization system. This infrastructure allowed the Romans to have good drinkable water available throughout the year. The actual canalization was built with large U-shaped granite blocks, originally covered by flat slabs of stone. We will now visit the town of Amaya from these western hills. As we follow the small river through the rich vegetation, we cross the Roman bridge predating the modern Pont de Madalena. Through the fields for market gardening and olive and wine cultivation bordering the town, we reach the wall and the skyline of the Roman city. The town wall was probably more than seven meters high and was made of granite and other local stones. It had four gates connected to the main roads leaving the urban area. On the south side, we arrive at the most important entrance, the so-called Porta Sul. The gate was directed towards the provincial capital Emirata Augusta, or present-day Marida in Spain. It had a wide entrance with inner courtyard and two round towers. Inside the gate was an impressive square paved with granite blocks and surrounded by a portico with columns. In recent years, excavations allowed to distinguish here several phases of construction. They demonstrated how the well-preserved area was also used long after the decline of the city, such as during the Visigothic and Arabic periods. Let us now enter one of the main Roman streets, the so-called Cardo Maximus. We visit early in the morning, before this town of some 2,000 inhabitants comes fully to life. The main commercial artery was flanked by many shops and houses with porticos. It leads us to the most important and fully central building complex, the Forum. From a side entrance we reach the central square. This square with porticos and shops and a granite pavement was flanked by the most important temple of Amaya. This building, surrounded by an impressive colonnade and portico, was possibly dedicated to Jupiter or even to the Emperor himself. Archaeological excavations and the scanning of some remains preserved above ground allowed to reconstruct the temple as standing on a high podium and with a monumental staircase on its southern side. It was flanked by water basins, a feature not uncommon in Roman Lusitania. The probably Corinthian style sanctuary was surely painted with strong colors and several versions of its original look can be visualized. Turning towards the other side of the monumental square, we reach the Basilica. This was the town's courthouse but was also used for political and commercial meetings. The radar prospections and some standing remains show clearly that this was an impressive aisled building with a high roof supported by two rows of columns. 
It's no doubt had a rich interior decoration of marble. From here, crossing the street, we reach another important public building, the bathhouse. Here, we first wander through a series of rooms for dressing and undressing, and for bathing at different temperatures between warm and cold. Then we reach an open-air courtyard with a swimming pool, and enough space for fitness and relaxation. Thanks to the partial excavations of this complex, the complicated history of the bathhouse can be better understood. It was built on the plot of an earlier house somewhere in the mid-first century of our era, and stayed in use until at least the third century. And so we leave Amaya, but not without a last look from above this city lying gracefully on the valley slopes of the river Seva. We are struck by its regular plan of parallel and perpendicular streets, dividing the many housing blocks. At its prime, the area of some 21 hectare within the walls was almost fully taken in by architecture. Only the steepest part of the slope was probably never fully built upon. Outside the walls, the landscape of roads and bridges, farms and industrial activity, regular fields and monumental cemeteries marks the impact of the Roman lifestyle on this part of Lusitania. <laughs>